Rings of Power Season 2 Episode 3. Finally, the story we've all been waiting for an update on. Beric the Horse! In case you forgot, Isildur is 100% for sure definitely dead. And Beric just wants to be free. A stallion of the Silmaron, if you will. So off he trots in search of... Oh, whoopsie, he ran into some orcs. Well, freedom was nice while it lasted. Oh, dang, Beric has some moves. Totally decimates that orc. And into the evil forest he goes, where even orcs fear to tread. Where he finds Isildur alive? What a twist. Looks like he won't be for much longer. Trapped as he is inside of a web with no Samwise to come and save him. But somehow our hero prevails and rides away on his noble steed. Meanwhile, in Numenor, we are grieving the dead king. And Muriel has upgraded from a blindfold to a full-on veil. Very demure, very mindful. Oh wait, they're removing the veil? Is this like a goth wedding? In case we forgot, that she's blind, she makes a point of asking Elendil what is going on to give her like an audio description of the room. Some random lady comes up and straight up slaps Muriel. And instead of putting her in chains, Muriel hugs her. It's a dangerous precedent in my opinion, but uh, it seems they are short staffed after they lost so many people on the whole Middle Earth field trip. So Farazan has taken up dressmaking duties. So he stops by to show Muriel some cloth options. She wants to wear white like her dad, but he's really on team red. He thinks that would kind of, you know, set a message for a new tone, new queen, new era or something. She's like, no, give me the white. It's humbler. Again, very demure, very mindful. Farazan makes a point of mentioning about how super rare and awesome it would be for an eagle to show up at the coronation. Uh, I doubt that'll be important later. It did seem at first, like when he was coming to her with the cloth, that he was coming there to like test her to see if she'd be able to tell red from white and then when she wouldn't he'd be like aha you're blind i knew it but that didn't happen so yeah he was literally just there to talk about dress options but next we cut to farazan having a meeting in um what appears to be a tavern about how muriel is terrible and there's lots of people that would rather he be king and blah 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 and then a uh, sealed her sister suddenly got some bright ideas about how to foment a coup so that's very exciting love that for her it's an excellent idea to be discussing this in an extremely public place where literally anyone could overhear it. It's either very bold or very dumb. Isildur's old pal stops by. Turns out he did overhear what they were saying and he's pretty pissed about it. But uh, he walks away and everything's fine again. And they get right back to talking about um, fomenting a coup. You see, uh, Isildur's sister has found something. And then we cut to Muriel blindly reaching for the Palantir, which is... <gasps> Gone! Meanwhile in Mordor, Oh, do we need to go to war again? Can we just chill for a sec? No chilling till Sauron is gone for good. Troll incoming. Evil Ned speaks some trollish. Then the troll trucks the envoy's head at him. And Evil Ned switches to English. Where is Sauron? Wait, the troll speaks English? Why did we bother greeting him in trollish? Meanwhile in Eregion, Durin and Disa did accept the invite and uh, Kelly Belly is telling him all about how he wants to make more rings, but they won't just be any rings. They'll be rings of power. That's the name of the show. Power to heal your mountain, like we healed our tree. It's still not clear on how it did that, to be honest. They wanna know why this deal isn't being done with the king directly. And Kelly Belly is like, well, I think the king will like go for it more if he hears it from you, which was apparently a bad idea because that gets Durin right off on bitching about how ain't no way he and his dad are gonna make up. They're still pissed each other. His dad is a jerk. Sorry, they cannot help. No, no, it is we who will help you to earn back your father's respect, to earn back your inheritance. And you are a friend. Uh-huh. Uh, where's my friend Elrond? He couldn't make it, but he sends his regards. Uh-huh. Well, uh, he never said boo about you, dude. I guess Elrond did mention every single other person that he works with or talks to. Elrond said you were the bestest, smartest dwarf. Did he have that right? That dude is full of shit. Elrond would never say something nice about me. So Durin is not down at all to take this deal to his dad. And Disa is like, oh, for fuck's sake. I don't care if they're magic earrings. If there's any hope, we gotta take it. But well, I'm sorry, what? Are earrings somehow more ridiculous than rings? I'm not following. Oh, they'll come around eventually. Okay, but uh, we are kind of in a hurry. Are we? So the king, yeah, he um doesn't want anyone to have any rings. He doesn't even know I'm here. Whatever, whatever, I do what I want. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lie and tell the king all good with the whole no more rings thing. <gasps> you would 
Why? Meanwhile, in the Black Forest, Sealdor and Beric are trekking along. Trekking? Trekking? Just, just trekking? And they come across some bodies. And he immediately gets stabbed in the leg. Whoops, so sorry. Oh my gosh, I thought you were an orc. Uh, no biggie, doesn't it hurt. <clears throat> yes, it does. Could be worse. Let me take it out. No! Too late. You're supposed to leave it. Are you? I've never been stabbed. Me neither. Here, put this filthy cloth around it. it was a wonderful meet cute. Uh, she clocks right away that he's from Numenor, and she's like, I'm sorry, my dude, your peeps bounced. But luckily, she's got a map. It's a very helpful stranger to have met, except for the whole stabbing thing. And off they ride as romantic music plays. There's no ships in the harbor. You gotta stay positive. And they come across another rando. This one is in bad shape, though. I must say, Sealdor is walking around very well for somebody who just got stabbed in the thigh. Oh no, it's an ambush! No, not Beric! But Cirque du Soleil to the rescue. Hey man, remember me? I'm a Sealdor. Yeah, duh. Okay, well, um, I gotta save my horse. Sounds like a you problem. And we're back in the Southlands, where we are grieving the death of the regional manager? R.I.P. And in the time it took for them to build that pyre, her son grew like a foot. Must have been drinking some of that Fangorn water. Meanwhile, in Khazad Doom, things aren't going super great in light of the whole eternal darkness thing. The king is super committed, though, to doing nothing about it. So that's great. But in comes Durin the Younger, browbeaten by his wife into eating some humble pie. So, um, uh, the elves say these rings will, um, fix everything? Is that all? Um, no. Also, I'm sorry. You look terrible. The miners did not hold back beating me up. He looks fine. Listen, this deal I just told you about, I don't think we should go for it. It seems super sus to me. Meanwhile, back in the Southlands, Sealder's getting patched up while Arendir explains why regional manager lady is dead, even though last season it seemed like she was gonna make it. Don't worry, my dude. Your folks will be back and your family will be whole again. Ooh, poor choice of words. Theo is triggered. Stepdad Arendir is doing his best, but Theo is an angsty teen. There's only so much he can do. Did you ever know my real dad? Sorry, no. Yeah, me neither. But guess what? You're not my dad! So a sealed door gives it a go, recognizes some stone structures as Numenorian. That's a janky ass fountain. It doesn't even give any water. No, no, it's an aqueduct. It brings water to your house. Uh, men can't build that. Oh, Numenorians can. Well, if Numenor is so great, what are you doing here? I heard it was better here. You really want your horse back? Meet me here tonight. Meantime, Isildur's gonna get right back to flirting. Stabby girl uh, explains survivor's guilt to him, and he shares that he totally gets it because his mom drowned trying to save him. And that's his big dark secret. No one knows that she died saving him. And he feels so much pressure and guilt about this. And this hits Theo right in the feels. And then Isildur heads off, which leaves Girlie alone. And she pulls her hair off her neck in order to reveal to the audience that she is, in fact, evil. Just before putting a hot blade over her back to create a massive new burn that I would imagine would draw some attention. Then we cut to Isildur and Theo approaching the encampment where Beric is. Theo creates a distraction by showing off the brand on his arm to tell them he's actually one of them, but they are not buying it. Luckily, orcs attack at just the right moment so that Theo and Isildur can escape. Meanwhile, in Numenor, it's coronation day. And we did, in fact, go with white. Very demure, very mindful. Queen of lies! Shush. No, no, I'm queen of the people. If you're hurting, I'm hurting. But like, who are you yelling at me for? It's kind of a weird question. Why would she phrase it like- For Isildur! Oh, I see, so she phrased it that way to create the opening for- Okay. Sister reveals the palantir. This elf rock is your queen! She drops it and lets it roll on the ground. No. Our queen would never use an elf rock. We'll just go ahead and destroy this thing. Well, actually, that is mine. Elendil tries to pick it up, but bam, he gets thrown back. And everyone panics. But then Chekhov's eagle arrives. And Farazhan, wearing that red that he was such a fan of, decides to step in for a photo op and the crowd goes wild. Meanwhile, in Eregion, the team is hard at work making more rings and it looks like Durin's pops decided to ignore his son's warning and is gonna provide them more mithril. Who could have foreseen that? Dun, dun, dun! So yeah, we learned that Isildur is alive, Bronwyn is dead, the rings will fix the mountain, um, new girl is evil, um, everyone hates Muriel, eagles show up to coronations, um, and yeah, I think that about does it. So much was learned, so exciting. Can't wait for episode four.